Good afternoon. I'd like to talk to you today about technologies that have been advancing in BIS, and in particular, hidden technologies that most uh, end users don't realize is going on. And to do that, I need to start from the beginning. So I'll introduce you to the traditional BIA devices, which used a single frequency, which was typically 50 kilohertz to measure bioimpedance. Using additional data such as gender, age, height, and weight, algorithms were developed to estimate body composition based on comparison to more complex technologies such as DEXA. Although useful, BIA had many limitations, especially as most of the comparative data was based on normal adults. So an advance on that was to use bioimpedance spectroscopy, which is measures the same impedance over a whole range of frequencies, but typically from five kilohertz to a thousand kilohertz. This led to the development of the famous cold diagram. By use of curve fitting, the resistance at DC, which is R0, and the resistance at infinity frequency, R infinity, can be determined. The resistance value at zero, which is in here shown as R0, is approximately 500 ohms in this diagram and represents extracellular water. The resistance at infinite frequency, and in this diagram is shown as about 400 ohms, represents total body water. From this data, a more accurate representation of body composition can be obtained. However, bioimpedance spectroscopy devices can measure impedance over a range of frequencies. And technically, measuring impedance over these frequencies is not difficult. But at higher frequencies, stray capacitances become problematic, leading to the so-called J-curve or hook effect. So what is this stray capacitance? Well, stray capacitances are unintended and unwanted capacitances in the circuit. They are caused by any two parallel surfaces at different potentials, which if close enough, generate an electric field. In BIS devices, this is mostly minimized by good design within the device itself, but it is not possible to completely eliminate the effect. In particular, external components in the circuit, such as the electrode leads, electrodes, and in particular, the human body itself can contribute to the introduction of straight capacitances. So in this diagram, we can show you exactly the problem. So the blue dotted line is the actual physical measurement of the uh, frequencies of, of the reactants against resistance at different frequencies. The gray line is a true cold diagram, but if you look at the curve fitted line, the yellow line, you can see that the R infinity and R zero values would be quite different from what would be a true measurement. So straight capacitors can be compensated for by trying to fit the cold curve to the data by subtracting the straight capacitance mathematically. And the most common method used by most uh, industry leaders is, uh, is time delay constant, the mathematical formula for which is shown here. So Z cor corrected equals the raw data times the exponential of the angular frequency and the time delay. Now this has a problem because this only compensates the real values of the, uh, the device in nanoseconds. Whereas we all know that the, there is a imaginary component to the formulas as well to give us the true data. So in this compensation it affects just the phase angle and not the impedance re, uh, modulus. Thus a more advanced compensation method had been proposed by Ruben Buendia, where the time delay value is a complex number, which represents the, what happens in reality much more closely. Bodystat MST device uses a similar approach, completely correcting both the phase angle and modulus, but expressed in a more straightforward form as shown below. And by directly subtracting the stray reactants in a parallel model using the following complex number calculation, we get a much truer representation of the stray capacitance, which we can then compensate. However, it's not as straightforward as that. Most people 
and we, uh, when I mean people, I mean most manufacturers, use a fixed um, stray capacitance compensation. In reality, a subject can be anywhere between 10 to 60 picofarads. They can introduce a stray capacitance of that difference. Whereas the manufacturers of BIS devices usually have a fixed compensation, which is normally typically about 22 picofarads. So we can have a look at what that is in this diagram here. So if we look at the top left-hand side, where there's no stray capacitance compensation, the blue line is the measured values and the gray curve is the actual true cold diagram. If you look at on the right hand side, you can see what happens if we have overcompensation. You can see that the orange line is actually below the cold diagram. Whereas in the bottom left hand side, we can see that for this, in the case of overcompensation, it's above the uh, true cold value. And again, you would see that there would be a change in the R infinity. But body stats MST device uses what's known as adaptive compensation. So although the person's, we don't know what that individual's um, stray capacitance induction would be, we can correct it no matter what the value is. So what effect does this have? So an, appropriate, so an inappropriate compensation of the stray capacitance is mainly infecting the resistance at infinity, thus affecting the total body water and especially the intracellular water compensation. In addition, the characteristic frequency is also affected implying error in the cell membrane capacitance measurement. So you can see here in this table that the relative error caused by just a 20 picofarad stray um, capacitance estimation mismatch from having a fixed uh, compensation can have a, a quite dramatic uh, errors, especially on the uh, inter, in, intracellular resistance. Most of the body composition parameters are derived from the total body water, which is mostly the fat-free mass and the fat and especially intracellular water, which it gives you the data on muscles, basal metabolic rate and sarcopenia. And so these will be significantly affected. And you can see from this table that a compensation error of just 20 picofarads, and don't forget the, a typical uh, subject could vary anywhere between 10 picofarads and 60 picofarads. And if you have a 22 picofarad fixed, compensation that it's not difficult to see that you'd have quite large errors. So the intracellular water has a 6.2% error just from having a mismatch. Yet as an end user, you wouldn't realize it. You wouldn't know that that existed. Total body water, 3.3% error and fat-free mass, 3.3% error. Now, it's very easy to understand why you would think that your device is accurate because you have a C certification and it says that it is, has a certain degree of error on it. The problem is you can't use a human being as your test device when you're measuring accuracy. So a tissue simulator is constructed, as you can see in the top right hand side. And so when you do your test measurements and show it to the authorities that your device is accurate, use this kind of device for consistency. We put a, uh, an extra capacitor into the circuit, which will allow you to simulate stray capacitance. And in this case, you can see we put a 22 picofarad capacitor in to represent a typical stray capacitance on a human being. So in this graph here, we can see that the, um, True cold diagram extends down to the x-axis. And when we have, uh, and then when we use the electronic human circuit without adding our stray capacitance, we get the blue line and you can see that it works very well. It goes completely on, superimposes on top of the cold diagram. But if we introduce 
a 22 picofarad stray capacitance into the circuit, we get the red dotted line, which is typical of what you would see in a human being. At the high frequencies, you get the J or hook effect, which you can see on the left-hand side. Now we introduce our adaptive um, compensation, stray capacitance compensation, and that is the green line. And that is added to the circuit with a 22 picofarad uh, stray capacitance in this circuit. And you can see that it's taken the red no, um, stray capacitance back down to what we would like to achieve. So let's see what effect that has on your results. So you can see the highlighted in yellow are the major errors. Now, we don't expect much difference between uh, R0, between the uh, non-compensated and the compensated. And so you can see that that has very little effect. So if you're lo looking to use it for just things like um, uh, lymphedema, then that will have very little effect whatsoever. But if you can see that there's a number of big changes, particularly in the uh, characteristic frequency, uh, which you can see there's a 23.9% error, whereas in the non-compensated, and you can see that it's down to 0.2%. So it's very, very much more improved. But most importantly is the um, external uh, resistance, the extracellular resistance, I should say, you can see that that's 0.2 and 0.1, so not much difference there. But the intracellular uh, resistance, you can see is minus 7.8 error. And whereas in the compensated, it is only 1.5. So a big improvement there. So in conclusion, the stray capacitance is a major source of error in BIS technologies, and it's introduced by the patient's body itself. This also uh, can vary from subject to subject. So using a fixed compensation value does not resolve the problem. It can actually in, in make it worse. And most BIS devices use a fixed stray capacitance. In fact, all of them, except for the body stat one. Body stat have not only developed a stray capacitance compensation algorithm that uses both the real and imaginary components of impedance, but has also developed a unique technique that automatically dot adapts the correct compensation value to the individual. This greatly increases the accuracy of body compensation values when using BIS technology. And of course, that's very important for your clinical work and for making sure that uh, you know, you've got repeatability and accuracy within your trials. Thank you.